Bonjour, Emily Talpin, I'm an OM System Ambassador and today I'm coming to you from the seacoast of New England and I'm going to give you five tips to improve your bird photography. So let's get started. Tip number one, you need to find your bird. I mean, is that the best tip I can give you? Yes, it is. And what I mean by find your bird is you need to do your research before you venture out. So for example, are you looking for a bird that's a local bird that stays all year round? Or are you looking for a migratory bird? Also, uh, if you are traveling uh, in another state or another country, uh, you need to know what bird you will find and if that bird will be, uh, you know, when you are going in May or in June or on the contrary, you need to go in September. Very, very important. Also, make sure that you know when they're having their babies because babies are super cute to photograph. Right now, I am on the seacoast of New England because I'm looking for baby plovers and baby terns. Two apps that I can recommend are eBird and bird's eye. I use them all the time and they are great, great resources for uh, local photographers. Ask people around when you're walking on the beach, ask them, what have you seen this morning? What do you usually see? Uh, they might be able to help you out. You really want to put all the odds in your favor when you are in the field. Tip number two, you need to make eye contact with your subject because the eyes are critical. So if you have a tripod, drop your tripod. By drop your tripod, I mean drop it to the ground. It needs to be lower. If you're taking photos of baby plovers and baby turns, that's where you want to be. So if you're looking at buying a tripod right now, make sure you get one without a center column or make sure that the center column is removable. I don't shoot with a tripod because the stabilization on my cameras, on the OM system camera and Olympus are really amazing and I like to be flexible but from time to time after a little while you know it might get a little heavy and I don't want to put my hand in the sand when I'm on my belly uh, taking photos of the baby turns so I have this little gear, a Naturescape um, skimmer ground pod 2 quite the name and it looks like a saucepan and I also have uh, my ball head here and uh, it just slides on the, uh, the sand and it makes it a little easier for me to spend multiple hours on the ground and I'm very flexible I can just uh, you know carry everything I don't have to unclip my camera from a tripod when I have this so highly recommend it. Also, uh, you want to make sure that you're focusing on the eye of your subject. So if you have um, a camera with uh, artificial intelligence that will recognize your uh, subject, that's great, use it. I know my camera will focus on the eye of my subject and then it let me focus on my composition, which is really nice, and on my settings. So make sure that you are focusing on the eye of your subject. Also, one thing, you don't want the bird to give you the stink eye. And by this, I mean you want to be an ethical photographer. So please do not bait your subject. Do not chase after your subject. Make them come to you. Uh, stay in a place, observe your subject, uh, and then let them come to you. You want to have a shot that's going to be natural. You don't want to stress the bird and no photo is worth uh, stressing a bird and risking the life of a bird. So be an ethical photographer. Tip number three, you want to be ready. And by ready, I mean you need to know your camera like the back of your hand. For example, if I'm taking photos of least turns, then uh, my shutter speed needs to be very high because they're flying so fast. Now, 
Just to give you an idea, I like to uh, start at 1250 for a second, just as a starting point. One thing I really, really recommend is uh, take a couple of test shots when you arrive on location. Find your bird, take a couple of test shots, and then look at the back of your camera. What is your histogram telling you? Are you overexposing your photo? And if you overexposed, then make sure that you know, uh, you're know you changing your settings. All of us, wildlife photographers, bird photographers, we have telephoto lens. My favorite, my go-to lens for wildlife photography is the 150-400. It's a M Zwicko 150-400. It's, it's an amazing lens. It gives me a lot of reach. But with that comes the problem of finding your subject. So when it's in the sky and I need to track it, it can be very, very hard. That's why you need to practice. So go in your backyard, find a bird, and practice tracking your bird when it's in flight. Um, that will really help you when you are in the field and looking for a specific bird. Also, one thing to remember is you don't want to clip those wings. So take as many photos as you want. And really, that practice of tracking your subject will be very, very helpful so that you don't clip their wings. And last tip, remember about your background. You want a background that's not a distracting background. Keep it simple. It should not compete with your subject. Your subject is the bird, not what's behind it. Tip number four, early bird catches the worm. You know what wakes me up in the morning? It's not my alarm o'clock, it's the birds outside of my bedroom windows. So you want to get up early. And one big advantage of getting up early is the golden light. You will benefit from it and it can make a good photo into a great photo. You will also not have those shadows under the eyes of your subject or the wings of your subject. So that's a big plus. Another plus of getting up early is that the earth is still cool. Look, I have my sweater with me this morning. And so you will avoid all the heat haze in the summer that will make your photo soft, even a little bit blurry. Talking about the weather, one other advice I want to give you is pay attention to the direction of the wind. Um, right now, the wind is coming towards me. That's bad. I want the wind at my back. Why? Because most birds take off into the wind. So you want to have the photo of a bird, you know, the front of the bird, not the back of the bird. Tip number five, what is your story? Because a good photo is a photo that tells a story. It's a photo that makes us feel something as viewers. For example, I was in uh, France, I went back to see my family, and uh, there is a family, actually a colony of storks that decided to settle in my village. And as a kid, it was not something that I've ever witnessed. So it was really interesting for me to, to see that change. And I really, really wanted to document it. Uh, I spent many hours early in the morning, late at night with the stork, trying to understand their behaviors and see what they were doing. Because I want to capture a behavior that I've never seen before. That's my goal as a photographer. A couple of examples I'm going to give you. I was able to photograph uh, the storks, the mama stork and the papa stork coming back into the nest and uh, feeding uh, water to their babies during a heat wave. I was also able to um, capture them, um, you know, at, sun, uh, at sunset, coming back to the nest with damp hair that they would put in the nest. Uh, and also my favorite moment was when one of the stork would come back into the nest and the other one would start calling, uh, throw its head uh, backward and then making the sound with its beak. And the other bird who was landing started joining uh, its partner. You can see it in the, in the picture right here. It was very a very special moment to, uh, to see. So your goal as a photographer is more than just taking a photo uh, of a bird as a portrait. I want to know what's the story behind your shot. I want to see behaviors that will really, really improve your bird photography.
So, I hope those few tips were useful for bird photography and uh, I want to conclude this video by reminding you that rules are meant to be broken. And it's true that you need to learn the rules, you need to apply them and then from time to time maybe you want to bend them a little. For example, maybe you want to go out and lower your shutter speed and start panning. Maybe you want to go out uh, during midday and take some photos and convert them to black and white because uh, photography is all about having fun and letting your creativity and vision take flight. So get out there, take some bird pictures and uh, let me know how it goes. You can follow me at, on my Instagram at Emily Talpin or you can also follow me on my YouTube channel and send me messages at Emily Talpin Photography. I cannot wait to see what uh, you are photographing and thank you so much for watching this video. Bye, au revoir.